face today. Bozo ears. I just got up from my nap. Yeah, that's what I... Working overnights. Uh, trying to get something done. I got to go to... Um, um, check on a school again. Uh, my, my thing is funking up. Funking up. But uh, before I do that, I'm going to get some coffee. Coffee. And, uh, oh, uh, we had the kiddos over the weekend. And, uh, you know, you get so busy. You know, excuses, excuses. You get so busy with the kids. And that's the important thing to think about. I didn't have any time to play with my video stuff, do my vlog, vlogging. So, you know, there's a balance there. And part of it, it too, is uh, the kids' privacy. Um, until I kind of figure things out, I, I sort of want to not make them so much. I want to kind of make them off limits as far as... Uh, video because you know there's some disturbing things that happen in this world and one of them is that um, people will get online and start making comments about your videos with kids in them and these are nasty people you know who present themselves as uh, pedophiles or whatever I mean this is stuff I'm hearing in the media so but it's something that I don't want to really, I don't really want to expose them so much or talk about them in detail. You know, let them have their privacy. And, uh, you know, maybe every so often they might appear, you know, having fun or doing something, but nothing that's going to risk them at all or risk their privacy. And, uh, yeah, you know, and I'm still adjusting to my schedule. I had one full week of this schedule, and actually, so far, with the help of my, my co-worker, who's much better at doing this than I am, much more experienced, I've been doing all right. There have been a few times when I had some close calls and had to kind of be bailed out, but for the most part, I feel like I'm doing okay. Feeling better about it, and I know that there are people there who are watching out for me which I've been at workplaces recently where people didn't do that. They tried their best to toss rocks in your bucket and make it heavier and, and you know, make you try and make you fail, I feel. Now, maybe that's just my personal perspective, but I think there's a big difference between a workplace that feels like it's in their vested interests that you succeed versus a place that's so competitive they, th they think it's in their vested interest to try and make you fail. And, um, and I think workplaces that, that encourage that kind of behavior with their culture and their workplace ideas and lack of training and lack of lack of real oversight and even lack of training for the people who are supposed to be overseeing you um, I think that those places are, are, are set up for failure ultimately and you can you can actually see it in there in the culture and in the final product that comes out you can see it in uh, in the way um, the workers treat their uh, their um, their public or their customers or, you know, in, in the way that they're, yeah, it's, it all comes out in the end, you know. If you're a car company, you start building poor quality cars or it costs you a lot more money to build the same quality as it does another company that actually employs good. I mean, it, it, that's the bottom line right there. It just costs you money, costs you more money to do things. And there are a lot of companies that just make that choice, like, wow. Our workers don't matter. We don't care about them. 
and there, there are a lot of companies out there that kind of have the attitude of like, you're here to work, and if you don't want to work, go out and hit the road, and and we're not going to do anything for you, and we, you know, and uh, it's amazing to see people who have that attitude, but yet their attitude towards material things is like, it's so precious, we got to keep it and maintain it, and I'm like, well, your workforce is the same thing. It's it's a precious commodity, really. But enough of the lecture. I'm going to go get some coffee here. Oh, look at my hand. It's right in the shop. Talk to the hand. And I don't know if my uh, audio is coming out properly. You probably might be hearing. I have a little bit of a problem. I, I figured out it's one of these dongles that's bad. I've tested this one. So we'll see what it comes out like. But, uh, and I might do more of these uh, instant video things, even though they're lower quality because of time. I know I can use my gimbals and, and have beautiful looking two-shot deals. But, uh, you know, it just takes more time. And, and this, it just put it in and I'm done. Sometimes you have to make uh, sacrifices just to get it done. And hopefully those sacrifices are acceptable. Which, you know, is better than nothing. So I'm here. I'm queer. Get used to it at the coffee house. Where are my parking doggies? Where are my parking? Am I parking back here? Backwards? You guys are excited about something. You think you have been inside cooped up because of the weather or something. Because your owners are lazy. <laughs> because your family is lazy. We don't call ourselves owners. We don't own you. Nobody owns you. Right, doggy? Right, doggy? Well, I'm here to get some coffee. Coffee. If you just get out of the house once in a while, explore what's around us, might see something. I found Hobby Hill Park, probably not more than a little more than a mile from our house, and it's really cool. That is North Broadway, otherwise known as the Old Pike Road, which is historic. And there's a walk and learn trail and a little playground. Looks like it's uh, pretty cool for doggies and for children. The weather is kind of nice, so we're going to go rock, rock around a little bit. found that somebody's left some valuables here, and it's kind of valuable to them. One is this pair of inline skates, and another is a cell phone, which they've left here in this bathroom on the sink. And uh, I could hear a phone ringing when I saw the skates down here, and I thought, oh, oh, somebody's looking for it. So I just called the police, and we're waiting here for the cops to come pick it up. I tried to call it back, but... Uh, you know, they have a, a lock on the phone, so just leave it alone and let the cops handle it. Well, a uh, high school age kid came along and went straight to the bathroom and grabbed the phone like he knew what he was looking for. And uh, still waiting on the cops on the inline skates. And uh, I'm pretty sure that the phone actually belongs to the kid. So. But I did call out to him and ask him if he owned the skates, and he said no. But anyway. It's so, Hobby Hill Park, a little history, it belonged to Dr. Claude Owens, came here in 1933 and then they donated it to the city to make a nature park. It's a nice old map, I remember some of these maps here. This is the town of Linden, here's the property right here. Linden became Gladstone. Pretty nice park, it's actually kind of a spectacular park really. It's like, wow, if we weren't waiting on the cops, we could go explore it just a little. But yeah, and then there's the, the stuff for the kiddos, playground equipment. So, pretty cool. 
and poor doggies. We have to sit and wait. The sun's going down. I don't think we can explore the rest of this park. So we're just going to hang out here in the playground for a bit. They say some of these are for not for kids under five, and I can see that. Let's take a little sculpture here. This is, or maybe it's just something to climb on. I don't know. I'm gonna eat it here. It says sculpture or warning. I don't think it's a huh? age five to twelve years. Yeah, it's playground something. Oh. That looks a little scary to me. I don't know if it's for climbing on or running through and decoration. Because I do know the kiddos love to go through little tunnels like that. And I don't see any safety climbing things like on rock climbing, so. Or, <laughs> what do you call them? Safety clevises? Like you find over here. This thing in the jig. I don't know if those are safety clevises, but you know what I'm talking about. Stuff they put on rock climbing walls so people can climb safely. It is pretty icy out here though. And there's North Broadway again. And you can see it's not too far removed from its rural roots. Oh, here comes my police officer. Woo! -hoo. We're free, we're free. So if the sound has changed a little, it's because I took the uh lovelier mic off. Just so we could walk around more freely. Yeah, yeah, the, the police showed up and now uh, we have just enough time maybe to walk a little on the trail. And I just saw a deer. Pretty cool. Beautiful. Butterfly garden. Oh, Jimmy. You've forgotten how to walk. You're being quite the oaf today. Come on, come on, dogs. Let's go. Yeah, we made it here to this icy patch. I tried to walk through and started to fall. I don't have the shoes for that, so. We will come back. This is a very nice place. Beautiful. Oh, and the police officer said that there was a report that those kids were here smoking something they shouldn't have been smoking they shouldn't be smoking anything at all but they were in the bathroom apparently smoking some weed so i guess weed makes you do stupid things like forget your very expensive phone that your parents probably paid and are paying through the nose for hmm. i could see the uh where did you leave your phone what were you doing at that park one last look at the sunset before we go home